It's ironic that the most troublesome part of any carburetor has the least amount to do with the thing's function as a carburetor itself. It's the choke. All right, so now you old timers can probably tune away at this point because you've already lived through all of this stuff. But for you younger guys that are just learning this and you're more familiar with EFI, the choke is an important distinction uh, between how a carburetor functions and how a fuel injection system functions. So when an engine is cold, it's oxygen rich. It needs as much fuel in there as, as possible to maintain you know, the initial startup until the cylinder head gets a little temperature in it, the piston gets a little temperature in it, uh, and then the intake manifold. And the job of the choke is the same as what the coolant temp sensor would do when you first start an EFI car. It tells the, it tells the computer that the coolant temperature is low to send, you know, fatten it up. Right, they send that motor a bunch of a bunch of fuel, and as the motor warms up slowly, the coolant temp sensor, you know, starts taking some of the fuel back, and you know, eventually you settle out to a nice idle. Well, when automatic chokes started first started appearing, like in the 1940s or so, it was a convenience item. Previous to that, cars had manual chokes, um, and the job of this is to literally to close off the top of the carburetor. So that it will actually accomplishes two things. First, it reduces the obviously reduces the amount of oxygen that goes in there, but it also there is a, a cam, there's a device, a piece of linkage that will kick up the idle. Uh, two reasons: to make it smooth, and second, so that the throttle blades are pulling fuel not just through those little idle screws that you adjust, but also through the transfer slots. So that gives the engine the full rich that it needs to idle when it's cold. So one of the big things, one of the big selling points about you know, making a conversion to EFI or going in that direction is the ease of starting. So let's go through some of the, okay, let's just talk about the basics. Because to actually tell you how to set and adjust the choke on your car would be an impossibility. This video would take all day long. And the reason for that is because manufacturers through so many different variations and so many different systems and, and, and little oddities here and there, you know, it's changed from manufacturer to manufacturer, year to year, engine to engine, that it's impossible to cover them all. So if you're dealing with a carburetor, you're going to have to do your homework on the exact, you know, your year, your model, if you're talking about, you know, a, a production car. But if you're talking about an aftermarket, and we're going to talk specifically about the Holley and the Edelbrock systems, because those are the most common ones that you run into today. But going back to the stock cars, generally, well not generally, they all use some sort of bimetallic spring. And that spring when, when, it's, when it's, the engine is cold, is holding the choke closed like this. As the engine warms up, the spring relaxes and the choke slowly opens until finally, you know, and, and in theory, it's all supposed to happen, you know, simultaneously. It's like, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a voodoo job. The engine's gonna warm up at the same time that this choke opens. The engineers did a pretty good job of getting that timing right on the original applications. Um, there are other things, other systems that work to support this. You've got uh, the heat crossover under the, under the, uh, the intake manifold, um, which you don't have on today's fuel injected cars. But if you look at car cylinder heads that come from the carburetor era, they all have that heat crossover. And the purpose of that is, let me see, do I have a choke? I don't have a choke handy. Huh, I'm doing a video on chokes. I don't have a, an old school choke handy. Uh, the choke fits in the intake manifold, and that heat crossover warms that spring and gets this to open and close. Working with that, in almost all applications, there was a flapper valve on one of the exhaust manifolds that would close off one side of the exhaust and force the exhaust through that passage to further uh, increase the, 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 the temperature of the plenum and get that spring to function correctly. When these things go wrong, they're wrong. Oh, wait, most important thing, right? This item right here, this is the choke pull-off. Now, I'm going to tell you firsthand, this little jammy sent more old-school cars to the boneyard than any other single thing. What this does is when that spring is fully loaded and the choke is, is being held closed tightly, what this thing does is use engine vacuum off the initial start 
and it pulls back on this diaphragm here, which pulls back on this lever, which opens the choke about yay much, okay? The choke pull off, uh, just about every single automatic carburetor or automatic choke system has got a pull off of some sort. It may not look like this one. This is what most of them look like. And you want to talk about really primitive? See this, see this little bend right there? That's how you adjust it. You adjust the choke pull off by spreading or narrowing that bend. Talk about primitive. It doesn't even have a screw involved in it. Although some of them did. Again, so many different variations of the choke system that I, I couldn't even begin to cover them right now. So we're just going to go with the high points. So why was this such an engine killer? Now, when you first start the engine, that spring is holding the choke closed, right? Because that's what it wants for that just initial start, right? Once that thing is running, that, if that choke doesn't open like this, that engine is going full, full fat. The blade will only get pulled open just far enough to pull enough air through to just keep things cycling. But it's going to be super, super rich. When these things would fail, like in regular use, people would know, would, wouldn't know about it. They would just drive around with the car chugging and bucking and everything else until like it finally fully warmed up. But after a few times, you know, a little bit of cycling and doing that, it'll kill the plugs. Soot, foul, right? Just a mess. And then once that would happen, you'd start getting soot all through the engine. The, the crossover that would actually operate the choke in the intake manifold, that would get clogged with soot. Rings would get clogged with soot. The engine's efficiency, you know, the top ring has to be able to expand on, on you know, on the initial, you know, when, when the spark plug lights, that ring's got to expand. It needs to have a, a gap in between the ring and the piston. Well, that would fill with soot. So you'd lose that efficiency from the engine. And though, even though the engine would run okay, kind of, after it warmed up, the damage is still accumulative. And it, it would, and this is what, this is what killed oil. This is what killed rings. This is what killed so many cars. You know, simple device. Um, but that, that did it. So these two devices work together in order to get the engine to start high idle and run smooth until engine temperature takes over. Most of you guys that are screwing around with these cars today are dealing with either Edelbrocks or Hollies, aftermarket carburetors. And the choke setups on these, now here's one from a Holly. This doesn't use a spring in the intake manifold, it uses electricity to open you know, to, to, to create, you know, to, there's a heating element right there, and that's what relaxes the spring and gets the choke to open. The electrical part of it is fairly reliable, um, and in the holly, you have, there is a choke pull off. You look at it, you say, oh, there's no choke pull off there. But no, there actually is. On any of the holly carburetors that are equipped with uh, an automatic choke like this, you'll see this passage right here is a vacuum source and this is the pull off so once the engine starts vacuum hits that and it pulls this back well it's it's kind of relaxed right now thus opening the choke a slight amount these aren't bad and you adjust the choke tension by loosening these three screws that hold this this cover in place and just tightening it and you know turning it back and forth until you get the right tension on the choke blade itself, which should be just cute, right? So in other words, like you want just enough tension to hold it closed like that. And then again, see the choke pull off takes over and bam, you're in business. The Edelbrock system is bad. There is no provision for, for manifold vacuum. There's nothing to pull it off. This is the Edelbrock system right here. It's on, this is on my own car. It's, it's coming off. I just stuck this carburetor on here to get this car running. But the Edelbrock one doesn't have any provision for a choke pull-off. The, the, the choke blade is just biased in such a way so that once the engine starts, man, the, just, just the, the volume of air through the, uh, through the carburetor is enough to pull this open just a small amount. It works, but the big drawback with these is that after you shut the car off, let's say it sits for 15, 20 minutes, the engine is nice and warm and toasty. It doesn't want any more choke. But because this thing has no provision for heat, it'll actually close up again. So when you go to restart this thing, you've kind of like, 
you know, you, you gotta play games with them. Uh, very bad, like, you know, on a, like, let's say a spring type of day, you know, where there just isn't enough ambient air temperature under the hood to keep this thing open, and this thing will just jam itself closed and you'll end up flooding it. That's the biggest problem with the, 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 the choke systems. And that's why these things have such a bad reputation being hard to start. So, you know, again, like I said, you've got to do the research on your exact type, year, make, model, the whole 10 yards to find out exactly how you're supposed to set your choke and all of the different devices that are involved in it. But for a, just a general overview, that's pretty much it. Now, as a hot rodder, right, you have to ask yourself, really, do you need one of these things? Because I'll tell you, mo most of my cars, any, anything that's like modified, right, I don't bother with this at all. Um, two or three pumps, you know, and then you got to feather the throttle for the first, you know, 15, 20, depending on the weather, right? If it's really cold, you got to feather the throttle for like 30 seconds, 45 seconds. When it warms up in the summertime, generally speaking, man, you know, just a pump, click it, and she goes. Uh, if you're restoring cars, then yeah, then then you then you you got to take all of these systems into consideration, and you've got to deal with all of the quirkiness and so on and so forth. But for the most part, honestly, if you can, leave it off, or do like God intended and put a mechanical choke on it. Just you know, pull it out as soon as it starts pushing in halfway, and then after it warms up, push it in all the way. But uh, that's it. Hope you got something out of that. Next time we'll talk about some of the the, the part throttle fuel metering systems, the uh, like the, the, the Holly power valve and the drop rods and the, and the uh, Vandalbrox and all of that. So uh, that's it. Till then, see you tomorrow.